But the thing is, if you don't find a good voucher, or if you don't find any voucher, mm. then what happened? You're very disappointed, right? Either you come back and your vouchers doesn't work and you get these red error messages and you're like super frustrated, or you get like five euros and maybe you saw that there was a voucher with 50 euros or dollars and you're like, whoa, it's right. not a good deal. Like, it seems like there was someone before me that got $50. And so mm. suddenly you have a lot more chance to uh, sleep away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Experience, where we give you an inside look behind the top product led experience. Each week, you'll hear inspiring new examples, hard earned lessons, as well as uh, strategies that are proven from experts around the world. This is your host, Ramley John. And today, I have here Enzo. He is the co founder and CEO of June.so. It is a next gen product analytics platform for B2B SaaS. It was part of uh, Y Combinator, this big famous uh, startup incubator for uh, different companies that have joined it that are pretty big. Uh, Enzo and his co-founder actually met at Intercom where they worked before and he is also a self-professed product and data nerd. So Enzo, uh, welcome to be here. I I'd love to uh, just dig in how are things with you today. Thanks for having me, Ramli. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you. It's end of the end of day here in Europe. Yeah, it, uh, thank you for joining us, e even when it's uh, probably time for, I believe it's pub o'clock or <laughs> the pub hour <laughs> or, uh, over there. So thank you. Really appreciate it. I want to jump in and, and talk a little bit about your your users. Uh, one of the questions I love asking is around what the success look like for your users and uh, it's specifically for June, June ISO. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot of things, but I think... Uh... I think in, uh, at the high level, the way we define the success is someone that moves from you know, not being very knowledgeable about data analytics to becoming the sponsor of data inside their company. That's kind of mm -hmm. the you know, wishy-washy definition we have. Beside that, we actually have a more measurable way of understanding if people are successful. So we have two measurements for that. One is what we call the activation. We looked into how many people uh, complete a uh, sequence of milestones. These milestones are, uh, there are three of them actually. Uh, we don't put our own product to do it. So one thing we look at is whether uh, companies set up their account. So whether they connect a data source, that's step one. Step two is what we call the how moment. We look into whether or not they uh, open 10 of uh, the dashboard or reports that we have inside the product in the first week. And the third piece, we look into whether or not they enable a communication channel within our tool to get notified on an ongoing basis about you know the updates about their their data and metrics if they complete the three they're like extremely successful if they, mm. they complete two they're they're kind of already activated for us yeah i was just gonna say you did uh, mention that you uh use your own product to to bubble this up which i wanted to show it to folks uh for people who are tuning via video there's a screen now uh that shows exactly what you know June that SO looks like around the milestones. And you mentioned those uh, those things, those milestones that you mentioned are now on screen, sign up, set up, aha, and activated. Correct. So you can set up these milestones based on your data. This is a mock workspace with some mock events, but you can use page views or you know track events or whatever you want. And then here, what you get is the completion together with uh, the exact name of the people or the companies that haven't completed a specific step. And so it's a very nice way you know for a startup like us to put a name and a face behind who is activating who is not activating and you know it helps a lot to understand you know whether it's the right person now who's activating or mm -hmm. not and take the follow-up actions and things like that that makes uh, a, a ton of sense you I, I believe you already mentioned this already um, in your response what is your standard for when somebody's like set up is fully set up is it when they plug in their data directly or is there something else yes. uh, you say yes Yes, in June, it's, it's actually a bit more like you need to connect a data source in a product to make mm -hmm. it work, but then you also need to have ongoing data. So there are actually two checks that we make, uh, which are the two, one, the two ones that I just mentioned. Nice. Okay. That makes a, a ton of sense. It's cool that you're measuring it uh, the way that this funnel is as well, because now you can see where the drop off is. I think that's a really great way to visualize this is to say, hey, from step two to three, uh, people are are losing it. Uh, I feel like a lot of B2B SaaS companies will find this very useful when they see it uh, in in this way. This is, pro is that probably 100%. something you're 
you're seeing with your people who are using unit so is that they're like oh wow okay we need to think about like optimize this this middle gap because there's a huge uh, hole that people are falling through exactly and i think i think the temptation when you use funnels in general is just to look into all the micro you know steps mm -hmm. and behavior and action that people can take i think what we what we've heard a lot from early stage founders or you know kind of like business that really want to crack the self-serve motion is that what matters the most is basically just to make sure that at a high level people go through these milestones right so instead of having a funnel where you, you can have like 10 steps what this uh view uh you know kind of like incentivize you to do is to just check a couple of uh checkpoints and so the way you can do that is by making sure that within each checkpoint you have multiple triggers right so you need to be able to combine multiple uh triggers uh you need to have also occurrences like it's not you know enough for people to open your product once but maybe they need to open it uh, 10 times you need also a time limitation maybe they need to open it 10 times within the first seven days, this kind of thing. So uh, all in all, it's a pretty different approach from a traditional funnel, but it's, uh, I've seen a lot of people coming on your podcast that talk about it. I think it's very, very uh, well understood now. Mm, nice, thank you for sharing that. I wanna jump into the current uh, experience of Juno.so for new users. Uh, as I'm bringing this up, you know, as soon as I sign up, uh, there is like three options here. Uh, one of them is just, Welcome to June, set up June. Uh, and then the other option is to invite your team. Go to a data source. Uh, and then the third is personalize your experience. And that's when people can schedule their time. But I want to get into is around there's a button here that says not ready. See June in action. I love this because uh, often it takes a lot of trust for people to plug in their data directly into a, a tool like this. And you showing some data, and there's very clear at the top says demo workspace. So that people are not confused that this is not, um, you know, live data from something, or it's definitely demo. Demo. Can you talk a little bit about the, you know, the the journey to introducing a demo workspace like this, and is it is it showing impact in terms of people actually? Oh, it's like oh, this is how this is the value of June uh, so. Yeah, I mean, as I told you, I I put together some screenshots of the the journey we went through. What you're seeing now, what you just presented, is the latest iteration, um, which we actually pushed three weeks ago. So oh, it's wow. a bit okay. early. Yep. It's a bit early to say the result, but I can already share some early results. And if you'd like, I can also show you the the whole journey and how how we arrived to where we are today. Sure. Yeah. Let's take. Let's talk about that that journey, that that change, that that experience here. So. Uh, I'm gonna you put together like a Figma <laughs> showing exactly the journey, like the multiple stages exactly for it. Uh, feel free to to share a little bit about what it looked like before and uh, how it evolved to what it is now. Awesome. Yes, yes. I think that's pretty like the main learning for me. Like I moved from being a, as you said, a product manager to a founder. And in the past, I would you know just literally just optimize my sign up flow so that more, more people would take it. I would work for, you know, post product market fit companies and just work on that, on that sign up flow or activation flow, whatever you call it. Uh, I think when I moved to my, uh, to building my own company, I realized that actually you may want to build very different sign up flows depending on what is your business goal. And so kind of all the iteration that we've gone through have a purpose. They have a purpose, mm -hmm. which is what we wanted to achieve from a business standpoint. So what you see now is actually the latest purpose we, we have. Uh, so it's it's this one here. Basically, um, what we learn is that a lot of the people that come to June are not technical. And so mm -hmm. they don't know how to get started. And so what we did is we branch two directions. Interesting. One is set up June, so you can just set it up. And the other one is invite a teammate, basically a technical teammate. To, to help you out. So we don't have the data to you know validate the hypothesis, but we definitely had a lot of uh, quali uh, qualified you know feedback of people that just struggled on that first page, if that makes sense. So this it is does, what the second yeah. step looks like. Awesome. So this is what the second step look like looks like when you have the data source, and when you don't, then then it comes with that. So that's the end of the story. Now I can I can come backward and tell you a little bit more about how we started and how we landed there. Let's go. Yeah, feel free to jump in. That is a, it is a fair uh, hypothesis there. Awesome. Okay, so we started 
around two years ago. And we had four uh, iterations. We started from alpha invite only, mm. then alpha self-served, then beta self-served. You'll see the difference. Then self-served with success assist or customer success assist motion. And then there is a current iteration. So alpha, we had no onboarding. We would just send a URL to someone and they would just use the product. We didn't build right. anything, right? <laughs> and that's how every uh, sign up flow starts. That makes sense. So pros, it's fast, nothing to build. <laughs> Cons, I mean, that's you're not taking it very seriously, right? <laughs> right. Okay, then we had the alpha. Look, this is the alpha. I found the screenshot on Loom. It looks so ugly, but I mean, I'm happy we, we shipped it. So right, let's get started. It's a good to, to start getting insights. Exactly. For, first, need to connect your June to segment account. Exactly. But you validate some hypotheses. Are people willing to connect the data source? You know, well, one of the hypotheses was that a non technical person had access to segment or CDPs and was willing to connect it to, you know, a startup. Uh, this is this was really important for us to validate because otherwise the, the rest would not happen, right? If people wouldn't mm. connect the data source. So we we validated a, a couple of things like that. I think it's also a first step in the PLG. Like as yeah, soon as yeah. you build that, you kind of like understand that people are going to self serve. So you know you're not building like an integration store where people can connect to uh, some data. You are building like a sign up flow, right? Which is very very different. Right. That makes sense. Right. So then the beta is here. Look at that. Gorgeous, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. It says, for people listening to the audio podcast, it says, great news. June has just started. It's just started receiving your events. And now there's three options, create account, add sources. Let's get started. Exactly. Cool. And then you can multi connect multiple sources, which was kind of magical mm. back then. And then we would have like some, uh, look, it's still the Lorem Ipsum uh, file, but then we would have some security uh, text and key. like some links, exactly, links to our security uh, commitments. So what happened here? It was very professional compared to what we had. It was really useful to go up market. So we didn't go to Series C and Series D on the world, but we kind of started to work with Series A, Series B, and, uh, and you know, they wouldn't sign up on that, basically, which makes sense. I wouldn't either. <laughs> it helped us also to try our go-to-market initiative. As soon as we had that, we are like, okay, this is good enough to start pumping a bit of traffic and see right. how people behave at scale, right? Here, people are signing up because you're nice and you contacted them. <laughs> Here, people like can sign up it. because they actually, yeah, want your product, right? Mm. That makes sense. Let's try an initiative already. It's interesting your point around, it's already a little bit more complex. Um, yes. So this is a good point. There's like several things happening all at once. Yeah. Yeah, we and ended up like, it wasn't it wasn't easy like honestly we started to add so many steps like our sign up had like five steps like overnight it's so easy to collect uh, more information you know and there's always someone in the room saying like i need a job i need a title i need a company vertical i need you know whatever whatever and so we had these crazy questions like one of the questions we had was how much experience do you have with data which is right. completely completely pointless right mm. for us it was at least so that's iteration number three Number four is the success assist. So it's what you said earlier, where basically you can book a call. Mm. We have this uh, last step where basically you can take a call. And again, this is Laura Mipsum, but we're basically we, when, when you do that, uh, you know, obviously Superhuman was uh, kind of a big inspiration here. When you do that, you want to explain to the user why they get value to opt in in a, in a, in a call, in the onboarding call with you. What are they going to get out of it? So here we, we iterated a lot on the wording to try to get the opt-in uh, booking rate uh, higher. And we were saying things such as, you know, we've done it like a, a million times. Uh, you know, you're going to save a lot of time if you just take 15, 30 minutes with us. And that was usually the case. Like a lot of people would just save a lot of time. Nice. Now, now you see the skip this step button, but the skip this step button came very late. Mm. Actually, in the first iteration, there was no way to skip. So people would either take the call or not take, or not be able to access the product. Right, that makes sense. I mean, that's good for learning. I, I find that very very early on companies should do human assist uh, for news, especially like those people who are early adopters w would more likely you know be happy to to chat and tell you why they're signing up and how they found you and stuff like that. Exactly, that's the point. Like. 
we kept that for many, many months. Like we dropped it uh, quite recently. And mm-hmm. the reason is because the amount of feedback you get upfront is like amazing. Plus it's much harder to convince someone to give you some feedback after they start using your product mm-hmm. than if That's before, true. right? And you can, you can always justify and say there is a reason why, you know, uh, they should talk with you. And, and in fairness, like there is a lot of people to whom we added value, I would say the majority. So it was, it was pretty nice duration. I think we, we, we got a lot of value from it. Hmm. So what's next? The next is we allowed people to connect to the product if they didn't book the call. So instead of sending, having to skip the step button, when people wouldn't book the call, we would uh, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we understand you don't have the time. Here is the link if you, if you want to book the call now. And if you don't, then here is the, the email. Um, here's a link, a direct link to access the product. And this is kind of the best of both worlds because you have the people motivated to take the calls and give some feedback that will up in a call with you. While, you know, the more sophisticated one or the one that don't have the time or maybe are not native speaker English, things like that, they're going to be very happy to just, you know, uh, use the direct link. That makes so that, sense. that is the iteration. Yeah, I think, I think that's where a lot of companies have landed. If you look at, um, you know, typically I mentioned Superman earlier. That's what Superman does. Now they're going to send you like three, four, five emails. And after some point, after some time, they're going to be like, clearly you don't want to talk with someone at Superman. <laughs> you know, you know what? Just take that link and, and, and use the product. And then basically in the product, there is a self serve onboarding, which is very, very well put. But for many, many months, they didn't have to, um, you know, they didn't have to, to build it basically. That makes sense. That's where the current iteration is now. You're, you, you're, you're talking about the best of both worlds. Essentially, is about you know people who want to self serve, give them that option, and people who need, you know, who there are some people who want to talk to somebody and get help through through a human, and you're giving them that option essentially with that. Yeah, I want to I want to talk a little bit about like you know anything that surprised you through this journey. You shared through. I love. Thank you for sharing this five iteration. Or is there anything that surprised you in terms of learning uh, across this? This uh, this journey of improving onboarding from from very very just share the link <laughs> all the way to now, which is the best of both worlds essentially. Yeah, so many things. Actually, I prepared that uh, kind of conversation a bit further with some other learning. So, I think I think there there are three things that I that really surprised me. So the first is as I told you when I started in product management, I started in a fintech consumer app company and the game back then was just reduce the friction as much as we could to increase the conversion rate right Mm -hmm. and i think something that i learned is that sometime increasing a little bit the friction can actually uh bring you better business outputs right so there are a couple of very famous examples uh one that just went viral yesterday on twitter was the duolingo example I think it was shared by one of the, the product people there. Nice. Basically, the, the test that they did as part of the sign up flow was uh, so basically, when you sign up on, on, on Duolingo and you decide to learn a new language, they will say, OK, we're going to help you, uh, you know, stick to your goal. And you can define your strike goal, so the number of days in a row that you want to, to be learning. And so usually, it was defined ticked by default. So the right mm. uh, version is what it used to be. They unticked it. And what happened when they unticked it, which was an extra fiction, right? Because people are now had to, to, click to, the, right. Right, to click something. What happened is that people started to be a lot more uh, bullish on their goal. So maybe seven was, was pre-ticked. People started to click 14 or 30, you know? They were like aiming for higher goals. And basically because they were committing into something uh, they were kind of binding themselves to something. Then the stickiness drastically improved for the customers. And you know what's the funniest thing in this experiment? The team didn't change anything. Like basically, these buttons would do nothing in the products. Right. <laughs> wow. Talk about placebo. So it did not absolutely no change in terms of like notifications or things like that when people click on the button. Nope, not in, the, not in the first iterations where they saw the, the amazing results. I don't know today where they add, but back then, apparently, they did nothing. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. insane, right? It's a great example, but it's, you know, it's like the unicorn, right? You, oh, mm-hmm. Everyone is looking for this, right? Like very low effort <laughs> and amazing results, right? Right. 
<laughs> right. Most of the time, most of the time you need to put the work. Mm. That that's another one. Like, I mean, we put the call in June. Like when we started June, I was like, we're never gonna put our onboarding call, right? Like it's so much friction. And honestly, I reconsider I reconsider this one just because you can deliver so much value in an onboarding call. Uh, we have people that come to us and they're like, yeah, I'm like, you know, we're five people, we try to reach product market leads. How do we do? And we're like, okay, so you can actually find your persona with analytics. Did you know? Just look into the most active people and their profile and you're going to find a pattern and people are like, whoa, that's amazing, right? And they would never know that if uh, if they wouldn't take the call with us or uh, there would be no way that we could educate so many edge cases in the product, especially on the first experience, right? So there is definitely a lot of, a lot of value there. And I have a last learning coming from my last job. So before Intercom, I used to work for an e-commerce company. And one of the things that the company found out, it wasn't my team, it was the ABT test team, they found out that a visible voucher was reducing mm. the completion rate of a checkout. So this is not a sign up flow, but it's still a, a workflow, you know, uh, with steps. Basically, what happened when you show voucher field too visible, a lot of people have a FOMO. They're like, I thought I have a voucher. And so they start to go on the internet and they start right, to Google. look for coupons. Yeah. Yes. I do and that. So they don't find you do that. Great. Uh, a lot of people do that. Now there are Chrome extensions for that. But the thing is, if you don't find a good voucher, or if you don't find any voucher, mm. then what happens? You're very disappointed, right? Either right. you come back and your vouchers doesn't work and you get these red error messages and you're like super frustrated, or you get like five euros and maybe you saw that there was a voucher with 50 euros or dollars and you're like, whoa. It's right. not a good deal. Like it seems like there was someone before me that got fifty dollars, and so mm. suddenly you have a lot more chance to uh, slip away, slip away. Mm. So what this company did, which was really nice, is uh, they kept the voucher field. Of course, you don't want to uh, not have it have any, but they kind of added it just a little bit, so people that mm. were seeking for it would find it, but people that didn't really care wouldn't see it. Interesting. And that that's what sense. I called the. Uh, that's cool. Why? But that's what I mean by when I say that the value isn't always what you think. Mm, that makes sense. Love that. And I have a last learning if you want. Yeah, I love it. Or let's let's talk on. about it. It's yeah? a rippling effect. It's a rippling effect. Okay, this is my first uh, experience in the in a fintech company in Berlin. So this is quite interesting because basically what we realized is that there was one step, which was about completing your postal address to get delivered a physical credit card. Right. And when we look at the funnel, the activation funnel, there are clearly a big drop at this step. Mm. And so we're, we were thinking like, okay, we need to iterate on this postal field. It's too complex. People don't understand it. And the reason why people don't, didn't understand it, to give you more details, is because there were so many countries you could be from. And actually, the okay. fields don't look the same depending on the countries. Like, we don't okay. have the same language when it comes to postal addresses. And so when we started to dig into that and try to increase the incubation rate, what we actually realized is that a lot of people actually miswrote the address because of the way the field was organized. Right. And so a lot of people were receiving the card at the wrong address. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. And the problem is that as a fintech company, you're paying every time you generate the card. You pay it to MasterCard, like, you know, I don't know, 4 or $5 back then. Mm. And so this had like a huge pro I mean, huge impact on activation, obviously, because if people don't receive the card, they can't activate and start using it. But it was actually super expensive for the company. And it's one it's one of the time where I realized that sometime when you work on this activation flow or onboarding flow, uh, whatever you call it, it's it can have like a drastic business impact or company level impact, even though you haven't suspected it at all. Right. That is so good. Yeah. What was the solution for this one in terms of like, I mean, I guess you don't have to reorganize the fields based on the person's location. Is that is that how you um, figure Correct. this out? Hmm. Correct. On the first step, you you define on the first step you define your language and then you define your country. In the, right. the second step of the sign up flow, and as soon as you define the the, the the country, then we would adapt the way the fields are called and named uh, accordingly. So, for instance, in Germany. Here, what you see, the CO, which is the optional field, it's mm. almost compulsory. Like the only way the post person finds you is with it. Whereas in France, like most people will not feel it. Like usually you have a, an address and a floor and 
I mean, you don't mm. even need the floor. You just give your address and that's enough. Not in Germany. Interesting. Interesting. Well, uh, this, thank you for sharing all, all, all of these learnings. In terms of like, what are you excited to try out next? Um, you know, you're now in the realm of best of both worlds. Are, are, is there anything else you're excited to try out for future iterations of this experience that you can talk about? Yes. So, I mean, for the onboarding flow, I think uh, right now what I'm really excited about is, so we, we are product led, but we start to have a couple of enterprise uh, companies, you know, coming in. So now the very interesting thing for us is like, how do we handle these enterprise deals? Because mm. as you said, a lot of people just expect to talk to you, right? They want to mm. talk with you. So one of the things we do is of course, like, you know, people can talk to us on our, on our pricing page. Um, you know, we have a chat, which is always available. And uh, if you don't have a data source, you can, you know, sell, skip the step and, and find a way to reach out to us. But in fairness, our flow is not really optimized for, our, you know, these bigger deals. Mm. And so I think now the kind of things we're going to look into is more like, you know, not only are we, are we cater to the, you know, product led, like to the product led motion and these companies that want to self serve and have different, you know, personas, whether they're technical, not technical, whether they have the time, not the time, whether they trust us, don't trust us. We also have to kind of like start thinking about layers of company stages, right? And, and that's right. the next step for us. It's kind of like this extra layer we, we will put on top of the sign up flow. And uh, we started with uh, like a very small, uh, you know, uh, approach. And uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very keen to see where it takes us because, uh, um, yeah, I know a lot of people just get, you know, pulled uh, away from like their product and motion into uh, into a sales led motion. Uh, we work very hard to make sure it doesn't happen. But uh, as we work hard for that, I'm curious to see what are going to be the intermediary, uh, you know, motions basically. Well, that's uh, super exciting times. Uh, that's all the questions I had. One final question. Where can people find out more about June? And where can people find out more about you if they have questions? Uh, where, where do you want to send them to? Uh, we are on Twitter and LinkedIn. So they can find June on Twitter and LinkedIn, June.so. And uh, I'm also on, on, on both. Twitter is uh, where I prefer to, to interact with. And uh, yeah, they can find me on Twitter at Ozn, zero Z-N-E. And uh, yeah, happy to, you know, help if I can. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Enzo. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.